welcome to my youtube channel in this video we are going to learn how to prepare the antiferromagnetic input file for any compound so we start with this compound um it's it has a uh, the fcc structure right then the only difference between a non-magnetic and the antiferromagnetic <coughs> states is this particular introduction we introduce this one to the non-magnetic so it makes it magnetic now we notice we have positive 0 0.5 negative 0 0.5 which makes it anti because for the, condi the, the condition for a material to be antiferromagnetic is that it must have spin up and spin down so this spin up for one means it's occupying this one then spin down which is this one means it is occupying this and that's that for antiferromagnetism but sometimes you might have an element te which is non-magnetic and if it's not magnetic you might want to share or distribute this spin up and spin down just within only this particular eu atom this eu atom so to do that if you come if you note that this te is not magnetic so to do that you have to create a supercell a one by one by one supercell so that you have more of eu atoms that you can distribute this one so to do that we go to the next file so this is input file for that same compound eute but this time around it has um a supercell so it has more atoms of this now this same file is exactly the same as that one just that this one is simple cubic while the other one is face centered cubic okay so to introduce our ferromagnetic um, uh, there's the spins to each atom we note that this one is spin one and spin two which means it is occupying spin one and um, this atom here and this atom and if that's the case then we want to avoid having our spin on this particular atom so we have to create another one on top just below this particular one so we can copy this one and put it below so that this one means it is occupying this one why this two means it is occupying this why this one has nothing if you want to add to this you put starting magnetization three but for now we have e1 e2 also to distinguish between this first one and this second one because they are all in use so there is no way this one can put 0 0.5 on this one and minus 0 0.5 here but in this case it will not know which of them is 0 0.5 or which of them is minus 0 0.5 so what we can now do is to put one here and put two here so with that we can say okay let's put one here let's put two here Let's put one here. Let's put two here. So with this, I've prepared my antiferromagnetic input file for this particular compound. So that at the end of the day, you have two of this. This particular one appearing in this and two of it here, one and two. Well, likewise, this is minus 0 0.5 appearing in this, taking this and this. So if you sum all of them together, plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 will give us 1 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 will give us minus 1 when you add all of them that will give us what 0 which satisfies the antiferromagnetic uh, states of this material okay so with that if you now have 1 2 3 you need to change this one to 3 so that it's so that it makes the um, input file okay so that's how to prepare antiferromagnetic input file for a compound what if we have a compound that has three elements so let's go we we'll consider this first one so we have antiferromagnetic for these three input files uh, sorry for these three elements okay so we still see the the um, expression that we need to put to make it antiferromagnetic so but if you now notice if we put this first one for this first atom 
second one for this second atom third one for this third atom if you sum all of them together you will have plus 0 0.5 which is still ferromagnetic not antiferromagnetic so what we can do to solve this problem and in this case we are including it to all these atoms so what we can do right is to discard this one is to discard this one throw it away so that it will only affect this first one on this first element this second one on this second element right so in that case it becomes antiferromagnetic right but sometimes you never can tell in and in this case all the atoms all the um, atoms in this particular one they are all spinning in one direction all the atoms in this they are all spinning in another direction sometimes it might not be the case sometimes half of these atoms might be spinning in one direction half of this atom might be spinning in another direction half of this might be spinning in one direction half of this might be spinning in another direction so to take care of that particular scenario you create a supercell and the supercell this is what you have now we now have we increase the number of magnetization to four so that we have 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 which sums up to zero now in that case we are taking these elements to be non-magnetic which is truly the right um, um, situation for this particular element so we now split this one into one two one two now so that this first one will occupy this first one the second one will take care of this one this third one will take care of this third one the fourth one will take care of this fourth one right so that this first one will be seen here so you now have spin hop spin hop spin up spin up while the twos are all spin down spin down spin down spin down and spin down so this one now takes care of the antiferromagnetic um, state but what you can do is to find out if this state is more energetically stable what you can do is to strain this one towards your right strain it towards your left and calculate the total energy then plot your parabolic curve your lattice constant against energy then you can compare with this other one which is when you give all these one the same spin up and this one the same spin down you also strain this one up and strain this one by taking some um um, adding 0 0.1 0 0.2 towards your right subtracting 0 0.1 0 0.2 towards your left so in so doing you can plot this um, total energy versus lattice constants and total energy versus lattice of these two then you find out which of them has the lowest ground state energy then you can now tell that that particular one which of them has the lowest ground state energy is the one that is most uh, most favorable how this helps Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.